Today here on Robert's Guitar Dungeon, I'm going to share with you 13 great guitars that you might not know about. You know, throughout all of my years in this crazy world that we call the guitar business, I have run into a number of guitar players on both sides of the counter who are looking for that one very special instrument that you just don't see every day. If you're one of those individuals, one of these 13 guitars might just be the instrument that you were looking for. So without further ado, in no particular order, let's get to it. Number 13, Yamaha Pacifica Series. The Yamaha Pacifica series make guitars across all different types of price points. You can buy them as inexpensive as about $179, I believe, all the way up to the $600 or $700 range, I believe, uh, at least as of the last time that I checked. My good friend David Hill, who is one of the hosts of the Practical Guitars podcast that I listen to very frequently, recently said on their show that he has never been disappointed in a Yamaha product, and I absolutely agree with him. Well, almost. I have plugged Yamaha products on this channel many, 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 many times, and uh, I will continue to do so because I think they are, I don't think that there's another one of the big brands out there that flies under the radar more than Yamaha when it comes to guitars. They make absolutely fantastic instruments, uh, and even the more inexpensive uh, models, the $179, $200 range guitars make excellent mod modification platforms if you're looking for a great playing a great quality uh made guitar with you know that's been built with good quality materials you know and you uh to swap out pickups and hardware and you know and even hone your guitar tech skills on uh it's a fantastic instrument to learn on as you know when you swap out pickups and all that kind of stuff you're going to wind up with still a great playing guitar if you move up the line a little bit to the six seven hundred dollar range uh, my opinion is there's nothing you would really need to swap out on those guitars as you know they already come with great sounding uh, pickups and good quality hardware and all that stuff. Absolutely a fine, fine, gigable professional level guitar for well, well under $1,000 that'll play and perform just as well as anything out there. Number two, the Vester 2 Concert Series. I happen to own one of these guitars and I actually demoed it on my channel here about uh, six months or so ago of memory serves uh sometime last summer i believe uh fantastic very very well built instrument a lot of people do not know about these guitars as they were uh made in korea but the they were distributed by a very very small distributor uh the name escapes me i think they're no longer in business anyway uh but that distributor i believe is based out of chicago so you know, you do still seem to find these on the used market, uh, you know, in Chicago, Illinois, you know, and uh, throughout the state of Illinois, probably a little bit more than you would anywhere else. Again, Korean made instruments, you know, neck through construction, uh, I believe them, probably an alder body, not a rope, you know, uh, solid rosewood fretboard, Floyd Rose licensed tremolo system that uh, holds up just as well as any original Floyd Rose I have ever played on, and uh, these guitars play and perform and sound very very good and can be had when they do pop up on the used market which isn't very often but when they do they can be had for very very affordable prices by the way this one's for sale number three the parker nightfly deluxe i want to hate this guitar with every fiber of my being along with the rest of the entire parker fly series because they look like this. They're the stupidest looking guitars I think I may have... No, well, no, I take that back. They're, they're not the stupidest looking guitars, but they are definitely kind of bizarre shaped, even for my taste. That said, of all the guitars that I have ever played, the opportunity that I had to play a Nightfly Deluxe several years back still stands out in my mind as one of the best playing and best sounding guitars that I have ever gotten my hands on. It was an absolutely, despite the body shape, whether you like it or not, despite that, despite the aesthetics, it was an, it was an amazing, 
performing instrument. If you feel the same way about the Parker Fly guitars that I do, you know, regarding the looks of them, set your bias aside for just a minute if you get the opportunity to play a Nightfly Deluxe. Pick it up and you'll be amazed. It's a neck through construction guitar, most of, which is a little bit different from most of the other Parker Flies uh, and was one of the fastest playing necks that I've ever gotten my hands on. And like I said, it just sounded incredible. Everything about it was a shredder's dream. Number four, BC Rich Mockingbird Special. Now, while I am sure that the BC Rich community is well aware of these guitars, uh, if you're not a fan of BC Rich guitars, this might be one that you want to consider. This is, you know, the Mockingbird is one of their almost normal <laughs> body shapes, I would call it. Uh, and, uh, you know, you'll notice the four knob control setup here is very, very similar to a Les Paul, as is the carved top, which uh, a lot of Mockingbirds do not have. The neck on this thing is what I fell in love with on this guitar. This is a one of their neck through construction models. The neck on this thing is kind of wide and thin, very similar to what a, you know to a PRS wide thin neck uh, is what I would call it. You know, think of the best playing Gibson '60s neck that you've ever gotten your hands on. Uh, and this would be very, very comparable. Uh, the Rockfield pickups that came in it, actually, uh, unfortunately, Rockfield pickups are no longer in business, at least to my knowledge. I can't find any current info on them any, any longer. Their website's down, all that stuff. But the Rockfield pickups, uh, I believe, were actually American-made electronics, and uh, they're actually very clean, uh, you know, very clear and very warm-sounding electronics. Uh, these particular models or, or models uh, was a pickup called the SWV, you know, a Korean-made guitar. And while BC Rich never came out and said this publicly, I have a very sneaking suspicion that this was their answer to the Gibson Les Paul. And evidence, evidence furthermore suggests that, as this guitar is actually one of the few models that they designed with a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale, just like a Gibson. Excellent playing guitar, excellent sounding guitar, very well built. I encourage you to check it out. Number five, the first act custom shop guitars. I bet you a lot of you are sitting there staring at me. I bet you a lot of you are staring at me in your screen right now going, first act custom shop. <clears throat> yes, first act actually builds a lot more guitars aside from, you know, the cheap box guitars that you see right when you walk in the door at Walmart. You know, that unfortunate, the Walmart guitars, unfortunately, are probably what they're most well known for. But at one time, they actually had a high end production custom shop that produced excellent guitars, such as the Sheena and the Delia, I think is how it's pronounced. If these are completely unfamiliar to you and you have no idea what I'm talking about and you think that this might be a mistake on my part, here's a fun little exercise for you. Go to reverb.com, search for first act, and then sort the search results from highest to lowest in price. You might be surprised at what you see. Number six, the Carvin DC 600. All of a sudden the guitar world seems to have discovered these guitars. There was a time long before the Kiesel guitar days, which we're all familiar with now as they are one of the hottest guitar brands on the market today. However, prior to Kiesel, you know, Jeff Kiesel and company taking over, uh, the Kiesel guitar brand was the Carvin guitar brand. And the Carvin guitar brand, of course, had their more than their fair share of custom order options, but they also had a few production models as well. And one of those production models was a neck through uh, super strat design called the DC 600. I remember a time when you bought anything Carvin. While you were certainly getting a good quality instrument, they just didn't resell well on the used market. And if you bought it new, you were married to it. And if you did try to resell it, you, you just had to accept the fact you were going to take a bath on it. At one, I have seen plenty of Carvin DC 600s sell for about in the $400 range, uh, particularly back in my store days. Now, enter Kiesel Guitars. The brand has since been revitalized. The seven and eight string brothers to the DC 600, which are, of course are the DC 700 and DC 800, you can find several of those on Reverb nowadays, selling for well over a thousand dollars. Which, and there is currently not one single DC 600 listed at all. Couldn't even find one anywhere. People are now hoarding them. If you, if you were one of the people that bought one originally and paid about eight or nine hundred dollars, which I believe is about what they sold for, and you know now if you've held on to it long enough, now you can probably make some money on it. I'm willing to bet. So if you find one for sale and you've got the money for it, buy it. Number seven, 
the Vox SDC33. This is kind of a unique little instrument in that it, uh, uh, well, it's just kind of a unique guitar altogether. You know, Vox is not really known for their guitars. They're more known for their amplifiers, you know, which, of course, are spectacular. Uh, I have gone on and on about uh, how much I've always loved the uh, Vox AC series, particularly the AC30 and the AC15. You know, love the clean tones on those amps. Uh, but they're not really known for their guitars. And, you know, they have, have actually produced guitars throughout the course of their history. Uh, but one of their more current models, which, are, which is now an import model, is a model called the SDC3300. This is a double cutaway model uh, with uh, actually sharp, uh, sharp points on the horns. And, uh, but the unique thing about this guitar, number one, the bridge design is, ki is uh, kind of unique and not something that, uh, that you see in uh, any other guitar out there, at least not that I'm aware of. Uh, but the pickups in the electronics are ac actually have a really unique design. Each pickup is, uh, a, I believe, a Vox design pickup with a lot of clarity. Uh, you know, and I believe, you know, pretty moderate output, by the way. But each one, you can actually shift the mode. Uh, on each pickup from a P90 to a humbucker to a fat humbucker. So three modes on each pickup giving you a hugely wide variety of guitar tones. Very excellent, uh, excellent guitars. Every one that I've ever played plays great, sounds great. Uh, you know, I think they, they were, they're out of production now, but they sold for about the $700 range brand new. Uh, I think I even saw one listed uh, on the interwebs prior to shooting this video for about the 300 range. Uh, 400 range is probably a little bit more realistic to be honest but uh you know but they're out there at very affordable prices if you're not familiar with them i recommend you check them out number eight the 2007 gibson les paul classic tom morgan edition back in 2007 gibson was running a very unique series of guitars called the guitar of the week in which as you guessed it yes they would release a new guitar of the week every guitar released Every week that year was a limited run. Uh, most of them, I believe, were about 400. And, uh, you know, had something very, very, you know, had something unique about them. At its core, this particular guitar was just a run-of-the-mill mid-2000s Gibson Les Paul Classic, which was actually a fine guitar. I like those guitars quite a bit. But what made this particular guitar unique is the finish was designed by Marvel Comics artist Tom Morgan. And Tom Morgan has done artwork for the Iron Man comics, Captain America comics, among several others. Uh, and when you see this particular finish, you can definitely see uh, that comic book uh, style of artwork employed in the finish of this guitar. Very, very unique. These, you know, people really, really seem to like these, but a lot of people also might not be familiar with them. Again, these were supposedly, according to the research that I conducted prior to shooting this video, this guitar was limited to 400 units. I'm going to assume that is accurate. However, I personally have seen a lot of these over the years, but I admit a lot of, you know, most of the ones that I have seen have been from standing behind a counter in a store someplace, and it could very well just have been the same two or three you know that we kept buying and selling over and over and over again so regardless of how rare they are you know it's still not one that you see every day these are really really cool looking les pauls i encourage you to check them out if you ever get the chance by the way here's a fun fact for you do you know what other guitar the gibson guitar of the week series brought us in 2007 Thanks, Henry. Number nine, USA Hamer Scarab from the 1980s. This is what it looks like. The Hamer Scarab is a very, very, very unique body shape. Uh, most people have never even seen this body shape before. I had never seen it personally until I saw this guitar. You know, the color, of course, screams 1980s as this model here, this particular model here is, in fact, a 1985. Uh, also has the Kaler Tremolo, another feature that was very popular uh, among uh, rock and metal guitars back in that era. You know, it's got a really, really thin, really fast neck on it. This thing is uh, another another unique thing about this guitar is it was actually one of the few what I call shred machines that were designed with a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. So if you like Gibson scale lengths, but you like shredders, 
maybe you might want to track one of these down. These do not pop up for sale very often at all. There is currently one for sale up on Reverb right now. Uh, that particular one, from what I could tell, has been really beat up and has had a lot of modifications done to it, including the pickups. Uh, it is far from original. <laughs> I am fortunate enough to own an all-original specimen. And uh, this is a guitar that I am you know, very, very grateful to own. I get offers from viewers all the time who see this guitar in the background and on the occasion that I do actually do pull it out and use it for a video. Uh, I get offers from viewers wanting to buy this thing from me all the time. And no, it is still not for sale. Number 10, the Bernie Custom Guitars from the 1980s. A lot of people seem to feel that Gibson were not exactly making the best quality instruments back in the 1980s, as that is not really known as one of, their, one of their golden eras. However, a lot of other guitar companies were in fact making Gibson guitar designs far better than Gibson were themselves. And my favorite of all of those brands were the Bernies. You know, the Bernie Customs should look very, very familiar to you as they were a dead-on ripoff of the, Gib of the Gibson Les Paul Custom. Uh, the difference was... They're actually really, really well made. They are really, really great playing guitars, and they are really, really great sounding guitars. You know, this is another guitar from that era that is actually becoming very highly sought after. Uh, the values seem to be slowly rising with it. You know, with each passing year. Uh, John Sykes of White Snake fame actually had a signature model Bernie custom guitar back in this era, and if anybody runs across one of those, please tell me where it is because I want one. Seriously. These things are awesome. Number 11, 1980s Gibson Les Paul Standard. Now, I know I just spent a moment or two seeming... Now, I know the last moment or two of this video seemed like I may have been poo-pooing on 1980s Gibsons. However, you know, there are a lot of Gibson fanatics that do, in fact, feel that Gibsons from the 1980s were not exactly their golden era. However, I am not part of that crowd. I actually have really, really enjoyed just about every 80s Gibson that I've ever gotten to play. And one of those guitar models that always stands out in my mind, one time I got to play a 19, I, th I believe it was an 85 or an 86. It was just a black Les Paul standard that played and sounded amazing. This was a full weight, full bodied extremely heavy guitar uh, that a lot of those Les Paul standards back in that day also came with a Kaler tremolo again a feature that was very very popular back in that era if you're like me and you happen to like heavy Gibson Les Pauls but maybe want something with a little bit of you know vintage flavor to it but you don't have three hundred fifty thousand dollars to shell out for a 59 maybe check out one of the Les Paul standards from the 1980s. That might be just the guitar that you're looking for. And I think you will probably be surprised. Number 12, the Gibson US-1. Speaking of Gibsons from the 1980s, again, the 1980s, of course, was the era of the shred guitar. There were super strats and pointy guitars and high output pickups and, uh, you know, huge Marshall stacks and all that kind of stuff all over the place. And real, let's be realistic. Back then, if you weren't shredding, you weren't playing. And the super strats were one of the highest sought after guitars that top guitar players were after. Gibson, of course, Gibson's designs, of course, were known to be very, very traditional for the most part. And, uh, you know, they were trying to find their niche competing with what the rest of the market wanted at that time. Well, enter the Gibson US-1. This was not their first attempt at a Super Strat, but in my opinion, it was absolutely their best attempt. And these are excellent guitars. These are a Super Strat, actually with a set neck design. Something that, uh, you know, the neck the neck heel was very, very unique compared to everything else, and maybe wasn't quite what, uh, what, what the market was after, but it was certainly very, very Gibson-like. Regardless, you know, it was actually, you know, the necks on these guitars actually are really, really great playing necks. And, and uh, you know, the, the couple of these guitars that I've gotten to play sound great. These are just great playing, great sounding guitars direct from my favorite era of the instrument. You know, and a lot of people don't know about them because they weren't made for very long. If you ever do get a chance to check one out, I strongly suggest you do. Number 13, Washburn Dimebag Daryl Signature Guitars. 
Dimebag Daryl, of course, is regarded as one of the greatest heavy metal guitar players of all time, but he is also primarily associated with the Dean guitar brand. There was actually a short period there in the middle of his career, right around the Far Beyond Driven record era, I believe, where he had actually stepped away from Dean and uh, left Dean altogether, really, and had gone to Washburn for a short time. And during that time, of course, Washburn produced both USA and import design uh, Dimebag Daryl guitars. They were, of course, you know, the Dean ML uh, most of them were the Dean ML body shape. I happen to have one of the import models that uh, has appeared in a few videos, but the USA ones are the really, really cool ones. A lot of them have a you know a hockey stick uh, headstock on them that you don't see uh, on any of his other signature models, and you know they're just really, really unique. You know, really unique. If you like the Dean MLs, if you like Dimebag, if you like this stuff, uh, you know, if you like it, you know, the, you know this style of guitar. I don't know where to tell you to find one because they don't pop up very often. I haven't seen one in years. But if you do, check it out because I think you'll think it's cool. I think it's cool. So, there you have it. That's all for this list of 13 great guitars that you might not know about. You know, hopefully, you enjoyed this video. And if, this, you know, hopefully, you know, if you did enjoy this video and it does well, fortunately, this is something that uh, I'm sure if I sit around and think about it long enough, I can always do a part two and so on and so on and so on. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you have any other suggestions to great guitars that we might not know about, please drop them down in the comments section down below. As I mentioned throughout the video, most of these guitars are now out of production. However, I will post uh, any pertinent links down in the description so that you can check them out. And last but not least, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please consider doing so. Uh, and if you do decide to do so, there's an alert button right next to the subscribe button. That'll make sure that you don't miss out on future content. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.